Pagatsumnida from Korea. Many of you are interested in coming to Korea to teach English, but if you're anything like I was about two or three years ago, you're probably asking yourself, how do I get started? What do I need to do? How do I actually get from where I am now into Korea teaching English in the public school system? Now, I've made a couple videos along the way that touch on some of the points of the process, and I try to answer as many of your emails as I can, and I even try to write about it in my blog when I have a chance. But let's be honest, the process is long and it's detailed. And you know what? You can't make any mistakes because there's too many people trying to get into this program because it's a fantastic opportunity. So I thought I'd take this opportunity to make this video about the process of applying to get a job teaching English in Korea from start to finish. The details, the documentation, things that would have been helpful for me about two or three years ago, I hope they help you too. Okay, so the first thing you have to do is decide if you actually want to come to Korea to teach English. You've probably watched all the YouTube videos and read all the blogs if you're anything like I was and you've heard a full spectrum of opinions and you're probably curious where you're going to fall in that spectrum if you actually come here to teach. Well, put all that aside and decide for yourself. Is it something that you really want to do? From my point of view, I would encourage anybody to travel abroad to teach English. It's a fantastic opportunity. Once you've decided that you want to come to Korea, the first thing you have to do is find a recruiter. Now the best way to do that is to go on to some of the major forums, some of the major Korean related websites like Dave's ESL or Weigook or Korea Bridge and go through the forums or the job boards or anything like that and just find yourself a recruiter and start writing emails to them. Don't limit yourself to only one. Write, your, write some emails to, to a few recruiters and get a feel for what they're like uh, if they really gel with your personality, if they're going to be helpful for you. Once you've actually decided that you want to come to Korea and you've contacted a recruiter, my recommendation for anyone would be to start the process of getting the following documentation. Now I'm just going to read it from my list here. I have a lot of notes. I want to make sure I get to them all the right way. The first, the foremost, the most important document that's going to be the biggest effort is your criminal record check. That's what it's called in the United States. They go by different names in other countries, but they're all the same thing their background investigations on your criminal history. Hopefully you do not have one. I would get on that right away. It can take up to 12 weeks. It actually took me 12 weeks to get mine. So start working on that as soon as you make a decision and you contact a recruiter. Also start reaching out to your university to get your transcripts. That's something that you're going to need to submit with your documentation package. You're also going to want to go to City Hall to apply for your passport to take your passport pictures and to complete your fingerprints. You're going to need that as well. Next one, a big one. You're not going to want to miss out on this one. You're going to want to go to the IRS website and download the application for your residency verification so that you can have tax exemption on the money that you make here. Now that's a big win. You're not going to have to pay taxes on your money for the first two years that you're teaching. So you might as well get that out of the way ahead of time just in case it takes a little while for them to process the documentation. Next thing I would recommend for you to get started on early in the process is contacting those people that you're going to get reference letters from. You're going to need a minimum of two. I submitted three, uh, but you're going to need a minimum of two. Uh, so reaching out to them ahead of time, letting them know what you're doing, what's going to, what you're going to be asking them to do, that's a good thing. If you can put a template together of what you want, uh, what you want your reference letters to say, as long as they're truthful and the person giving your reference can just look at it and sign it easily, that's probably the best bet. So get on those things right away early on in the process and it'll make everything easier in the end. Okay, now that you've gotten started on all those things and they're in, process, and they're in progress, you're going to want to get started on completing your application. Now your application is not just one document. Uh, there are some supplemental forms and some of those include summary forms, uh, evaluations, uh, documents if you're uh, coming as a couple, if you have children, things like that. If you're trying to get into Seoul, you're also going to have a whole subset of documents that Seoul requires separate from the rest of the country. Uh, so you're going to want to complete that. Make sure you're filling all the required fields. You don't really get a second chance. And your recruiter will help you with that, but make sure you do it right the first time. It'll make your life a lot easier. Okay, you've completed your application. You've received your passport. You have passport pictures. And you have your reference letters completed and scanned. The first phase 
is going to be taking those documents, your application, a copy of your passport, a scanned copy, your reference letters, also in scanned form, make sure they're signed before you scan them, and, and scanned electronic for, uh, versions of your photos, uh, preferably attached to your application, and then scan the application. Now, all of these in electronic format, you're going to email them to your recruiter, or if things have changed slightly, you're going to email them to Epic. Now, once you've taken all of those electronic documents and emailed them out, Epic is going to review them to see if you're a good fit, and they're going to hopefully schedule for you an interview. Now, those interviews take place either by phone or by a webcam, like Skype. So it's a good thing if you get an interview. That means that they're pretty much interested in you, given that any of your uh, other documentation, like your criminal record check, come back clean. Now, while all this is taking place, if you have received your criminal record check, you're going to want to take that and a copy of your college diploma and get it notarized first. And a notary, you go to a notary public and they stamp it if you've, if you've had that done. It's a pretty simple, straightforward process. Once you've got it notarized, then you're going to send it off to the state to have it apostilled. And that's an important final step for those two documents. A copy of your diploma and your criminal record check. They need to be notarized and apostilled. Now, once you've completed your phone interview, you're going to let your recruiter know that it's completed and you're going to start on the process of putting your uh, complete comprehensive documentation package together. Now, important note, you're going to typically need to make two copies of your entire documentation package with the exception of your college transcript, your transcript because that's going to be sealed. So you don't make photocopies of that, but everything else is going to need to be photocopied. I say two copies because my recruiter actually wanted one copy for themselves, and then the original documents plus one set of photocopies goes to Epic. Okay, now the list of documentation that's going to be part of this package that goes out to Epic. It's quite long, so I'm just going to get into it. The first thing that you're going to need, your completed application with a photo attached. Now this is your actual original hard copy of your application with an actual photo glued to it. You're going to need a self-medical assessment. It's essentially just saying, to the best of my knowledge, I'm well. Um, your personal essay, why you want to go to Korea to teach English. What is it about this opportunity that intrigues you so much? That's your personal essay. You're going to need a photocopy of your passport. Obviously not your actual passport. You're going to need that when you're traveling, but just uh, the pages that have your passport number and your photo. Now at this time, hopefully you have your apostille criminal record check in hand. That's going to need to be included in the package. Also your apostille copy of your college diploma, your official sealed college transcripts, your signed letters of recommendation, the originals, the actual copy that was signed, two if not three, uh, if you have a TESOL certification, you're going to want to send a copy of that. If you have a master's degree, you're going to want to send also a copy of your uh, master's diploma. You don't have to get that uh, apostilled. At least you didn't have to get it apostilled at the time of applying when I was applying. Things may have changed. Um, you're also going to need a transcript if you have a master's degree. If you're a licensed teacher in the state that uh, you're from, you're going to need a photocopy of your teacher's license as well. Now this is different from a TESOL certification. This is if you're licensed to teach in the state that you live in, an actual teacher back home. Now once you have the original documentation package and you've made photocopies of everything except for the transcripts, um, you're going to take all of that and you're going to include payment in order for your recruiter to mail it off to Epic. Now that's not cheap, it has to go FedEx so that they can sign off on it. At the time for me it cost around 70 or 80 US dollars. Once Epic receives that, now they take your uh, your original documents and a photocopy and they start to verify everything. They go through your assessments, your application, make sure everything's in line, make sure your criminal record check has not been tampered with. 
Uh, one note on that, an apostille is a document that gets attached to the document that you're trying to have verified. Now, they're attached with staples. Do not remove those staples. If you remove those staples or it looks like you've tampered with them, they will be rejected. So that's a very sensitive topic. Uh, that's one you want to be real careful with, especially when you're photocopying them. So Epic now is verifying everything. If everything pans out, uh, they look back at your interview and now they have a full uh, view of who you are, if you're a good fit, and they make the decision to hire you or not. Now if they do decide to move forward with hiring you and giving you a, uh, a position here in the Epic, uh, Epic program, they're going to give you two things, a contract and a notice of appointment, basically saying that they're, uh, it's a letter of intent to hire you. Now once you have your notice of appointment and your contract and everything is, is set, at this point you move forward with getting your E2 visa. Now in my case, the nearest consulate, I live in the Fort Lauderdale, Florida area, the nearest consulate was in Georgia. Now that's a little bit of a trek, but if you're going through the public school system, they've compromised and said you can just send in the documents as opposed to actually going there to interview in person. Now, I don't know if it's still the same way in, uh, for private academies or hogwans, but you just mail the, mail the information in, your, your documentation uh, to apply for your E2 visa. Once you get that taken care of, you can now start making flight arrangements. Uh, your recruiter can help you with that or you can do it yourself. I had frequent flyer miles on my credit card, so I used those, which was nice. And that's it. Now you get on the plane, you fly to Korea, and you're here. You go through orientation, and you're well on your way to teaching English in Korea like me. I hope this was helpful for you. I'm not going to drag on anymore. If you still have any more specific questions, please feel free to email me. Please subscribe if this was helpful for you. But I think and I hope uh, that this will really help a lot of people out uh, that are really interested sincerely in coming to Korea to teach English. Thanks for joining me. Thanks for listening and have a great day.